You're gonna show me how to make my own closing loop, right? Correct. I didn't even know that was a thing. All right, awesome. What do you got, man? All right, hey everybody. Chris Fikes with Crave, and I'm here again with my good friend Cookie. He's a rigger here at Spaceland San Marcos. And we're gonna go over right now closing loops. Um, gonna just look at where, what to look for as a closing loop's getting worn out, right? Yep. Um, making a new closing loop, loop, or like, you know, tying it up, putting it on. But also, you're gonna show me how to make my own closing loop, right? Correct. I didn't even know that was a thing. All right, awesome. What do you got, man? All right, so uh, we have a couple of different closing loops here. Um, as you can see, this one here's got a lot of wear to it. Uh, so people, everyone in the skydiving kind of scene says about 10% wear is when you should probably change your closing loop. Um, they're very cheap uh, to replace. So, I mean, I honestly, I change mine if it's kind of dirty. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's better to uh, have a new closing loop rather than to have an out of sequence malfunction or as most people know, a, a horseshoe malfunction. Mm -hmm. um, that's not a very fun thing that could happen because I guarantee you that's gonna be a, a cutaway. So it's also gonna cost you more money. Mm -hmm. um, we already are jumping out of airplanes. We have a lot of variables, so why make it you yeah. know, more dangerous? Yeah, so I mean, 10%, I honestly don't think I could tell what's 10%. The, the point is anywhere, I mean like- Anywhere, Anywhere, honestly. just change it and out. Anywhere, change it. I've seen people take it further and further than they really need to, and just like, most, mostly out of laziness, and mm -hmm. just like, oh, I'll do it next time, I'll do it next time. They're trying to hop on a load. Yeah. And honestly, that's like when things can go wrong. Yeah, and I, I totally understand, I've, I've, I've done that, you know, you're, you got a whole day of jumping, you're, you're halfway through the day, it's really busy, you're having a blast, and you're packing and you see that your closing loop is starting to wear. You're like, oh, it'll be fine, just do one more. But really, I mean, just take the, yeah, it takes two minutes, three minutes, minutes to change I'll it out real quick. Me, I'll change it out for you, yeah. make you new. I mean, you miss one load, one. so what? You may not even miss a load, you can just run yeah. up here real quick, say, hey, do you have a closing loop I can get? Yeah. All right, so so let's go over these right here. Why'd you pull these, these out? So this one here, you can see it's obviously got some frays around the top. Mm -hmm. um, that is a lot from being used and also the pull-up cords that we use. The pull-up cords we use, they actually are cut mm -hmm. with a, uh, like a, a thread cutter. So they are, there is a sharp edge. Okay. So over time, if you pull that out when it's under tension, it's gonna start to eat away yeah. here at this, this loop. Gotcha. This one's a little bit more on each side. So that one was definitely, you know, getting worn pretty good mm -hmm. and a lot of you see on the outside what you don't see is the inside the inside is a lot worse and that's the side that people don't really look at mm -hmm. the inside is way more worse than the outside is yeah I didn't even think about that actually so it's and you're not you're not looking at it you can't see it mm -hmm. that's the part on the inside that gets worn the most yeah so if there's if there's any amount of wear on the outside the likelihood probably, is yeah. there's multiple times that much wear on the inside oh yeah definitely so what's this one why'd you why'd you bring so this I out? pulled this one this one I pulled out of a rig um, what happened was the knot got too tight because of, you know, uh, maybe overstuffing the container with a bigger parachute than the container can hold too much force and it pulled right through that knot. Only tie one knot. If there was only one knot here, what do you think happens to that, that washer after it passes? Oh, I mean, one just, knot? it goes off. The closing loop comes out. Yep. And yeah. it, it, when you don't want it to. Yeah. So I am super religious about two knots or one giant knot. Okay. But I, I, I like the two knots. So, so you're saying that this washer was originally above this knot where it was supposed to be. It was. And at some point after packing and deployment, it actually slipped somehow. It went All over that down, knot. Yeah. Wow. If you look, you can kind of see how tight this knot is here. And there's a lot of wear from this washer getting pushed and shoved down that wow. from the tension. Now, do you think these two knots originally were like really close together and it, yeah. it actually stretched it out? They were probably super close together. This one was probably tighter, that one as it went through, pulled through, got tighter, and then it stretched it a bit. Cause this does, this is type 2A, so it does stretch a little bit. Okay. And as the knots tighten, they do tighten so the threads get longer. Okay, interesting. Okay, so so this ma this material is, what is this material called again? This material is t called type 2A. And it does, obviously it stretches a little bit like you said. So uh, real quick, talk to me about whenever I'm changing out my closing loop, should I take that stretching into account? Yeah, so basically when I do, when we make the new closing loops, I make them probably about a quarter inch 
smaller than the original loop, but you try to reference the old loop, which mm -hmm. just makes it easier. Mm -hmm. If you lose it, then we kind of have to guess, and then, you know, most of the time we can get it. But uh, if you have your old loop, hold on to that, bring it up. I can make one exactly the same size and get you back going. Um, but the knots do get tighter, so it does stretch out. Yeah, so you, you try to make it about a quarter of an inch Quarter of an inch shorter, shorter than because it's going to stretch out. Yep. Okay. Because it will not the knots will tighten. Okay. Will so the first initial pack job probably with is going to feel pretty tight. Yep. Okay. And then over time it'll loosen up. The knots will tighten up. Yeah. Which will give it a little more more space. Okay. Cool. All right, dude. I'm, I'm excited to. I want to learn how to make because all I've ever done I've just bought like closing loops. I didn't. I never thought about making my own. So this is awesome. Yep. So we just take some some type two A. I get them in spools. Okay. Uh, what I do is I basically take. I fold it in half like so. I'm going to take my FID, F-I-D. FID? Yep. Okay. I'm going to insert it through the bottom. There's a little opening in the hole. Pull it through. I'm going to stop right before where I made that crease. And you just made the crease right in the middle, like right in, in half. Right in the middle, right in half is fine. Then I'm going to take and I'm going to insert this into the inside of the FID. Okay. Hold on, show us exactly what you did. Just like that. Okay, so you you put the fid, you in fed it in bottom. through the bottom up to the halfway point right where it comes out. Right, right, like uh, uh, maybe... A millimeter below the halfway yeah. point. Okay, and then, and then you put the other end through the, the slit or the yeah. eyelet of the fid. Okay, correct. And then I'm gonna pull this back. Once I pull this back, I'm gonna grab on the lower part, the part uh, of the type 2A that I put the fid through I'm gonna pull it towards myself. Wait, what do you mean you're grabbing onto it? I'm gonna grab on this loop right here. Oh, so oh I see what you're saying. This bottom part. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I'm gonna pull that into there just like that. So uh -huh. now I'm gonna just milk the rest of this out so I don't break my fit. Because if I pull too much, it could break. This is just flimsy wire. wire. Comes out the bottom, take that fit off. Now we'll come up to the top the piece on the inside is going to adjust the loop length. Now, I've seen people with loops, huge loops. Hold it right over here, over the black. Sorry. So, I've seen people with, I'm going to extend this out a little bit, just for, I've seen people with loops like this. What, uh, what do you think is potential hazard for a loop this big when you're going I to mean, pin something? Say this is sitting here, you're going to go pin your your closing pin. I, I mean, I don't know, honestly, what? So basically our closing pin is like a hook, right? And then yeah. we have an eyelet. Right. And what happens if I was to shove that all oh, the, the way through? Oh, the eyelet go all the way through. All the way through. Mm -hmm. If this is, loop is super big like that. Yeah. What do you think would happen if I go to, when I go to deploy? Oh yeah, you're not deploying. It's exactly, not happening. Right? <laughs> yeah. So I tell, I always try and tell people, have that just about there. Just enough for that pin to go through. Not a, not super big to where the uh, the eyelet eyelet can go through. Then what I'll do is I'll hold this here. I'm going to milk all this back down here, and then there's your closing loop. Okay. So, so let's what say, what length of cord do you start off with? Um, it really varies on container. Um, I just kind of cut these a generic. Um, these will probably fit most rigs. But I mean the original length. This length is yeah. what 14 inches? Probably around there. And it now it's about half. Okay, so twelve to fourteen inches of this cord would be enough to start with, right? Yeah, depending if you have like a wings. I know some wings they have super super long closing loops. Oh, okay. So it all depends on the manufacturer. Oh, okay, okay. Awesome, you want to make one? Yeah, I'll try to make one. All right. So just go ahead and take that, make it in half. All right. So fold it in half. Yeah, right. but kind of like to line them up if, if, as good as I can, and then make like a ends. good pinch right there at the end so you know where yep. that is going to be. Now we're going to take your fid. Okay. You're going to insert it into the lower, the one on the lower. So if you hold it together, yep, just like that. So this one? Mm-hmm. All right, you're supposed to be video, man. All right. All right, so put it in here. Now you're going to go to where you're right below your crease that you made or and, at the crease. And do I want to come out the inside or yes, the outside? Yes, come out the inside because when we inside. fold it over, that's going to go into itself. Okay. So there's my crease right there, okay. right? So I want to come out right below it. Yep. Is there a trick to getting it to come out? Nope, just push it on through. Okay. So now just like that, then take this end. Mm-hmm. 
and nope. put it. So what we're going to do is put it through the bottom of that because when we pull it back through, we want it to not be twisted. And when so like we this? do put in, yeah, put it make just just like that's enough. Yep. Okay, so don't pull it in too. Don't put it in too far. Yep, because it'll be. Just think about we're trying. We just shoved it through that hole. We're trying to th put all this back through there. It'll be okay. a little. Well, hard. is this is this too much? Nope, that's perfect. All right, so now just carefully kind of get it in there. Yeah, what I like to do is hold this part of it. Okay. And pull on that fid. Pull, pull, pull until it goes inside. I'm not going to break it. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not too. Oh, okay. All right. So now it's in there. Now then I can just. So also what we want to make sure of is that when you put your, pull the loop lung, it's going to be. Even. Very even and nice. So go ahead and milk this out the rest of the way. That's fine. Cause it's not, we just don't want any twist up here. I see what you're saying. So take this off the fit. Yep. All you're doing is pulling that other piece of line through itself. Uh, yeah. I see what you're saying. Just like that. Yep. Take the now fit take off this now. out. Now remember the inside piece, adjust the loop length. Okay. So well, I mean, this is just, I'm just holding both of them, just pulling the, the slack out and it's yep. closing it quite a bit. And then if you need to So that's too, still, that's too big of a I would say loop. this is still a little big. So we just pull right here. Is that a little too yep. big? Nope, that's good. So just like that? Just like that. Bam, done. Made, a, made my first closing loop. Thanks, man. Yeah. Awesome. So then also, I've seen a lot of people with uh, single knots, which okay. I, I don't condone. Like, for instance, this here, that, that second knot wasn't there. That would have been out of the container. Yeah. Um, there's a couple ways you can do it. Um, go around, around. Okay, hold on, wait, go, go back and let, it, let us see exactly what you're doing. So I'm gonna tie this. So let's say I want my loop to stop here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go around, around, and through. What that's going to give me is it's going to give me a bigger knot. Okay, untie it and do it one more time. All right, so you're going around, around the bottom. Now, wait, move your, move your fingers. So around the bottom, and then what? Around again, and through the back. Okay, so she's giving you a nice large knot. Yep. So you can do one of you can either do it that way or what I also like the double knot method, which take do one knot going one way mm -hmm. and then take another knot going the opposite way. So it locks it on itself and makes it a little more bulky. I gotcha. Like so. So now these are going to this is going to stop this from going any further mm -hmm. that's going to stop that yeah and then what i would normally do let's just say i like this length this is my length i'm going to cut it here leave a little tail because it just in case this happens to slide down or tighten up we don't want it to come all the way off i'm going to burn the edge of this so it doesn't fray give a little pat uh, if, you, if you don't burn the edge after after so much time, you rubbing it, rubbing it, rubbing it, they can fray off like that and it could fray up to the knot and then eventually loosen itself up. Okay. It's a possibility. All right. Cool. Awesome, man. And then always, very important, don't forget your washer. <laughs> it's going to keep that thing in there. All right. Very helpful. Thank you, man. Yeah. Um, there you go. Closing loops. Keep an eye on it. Change them out regularly. If you see any wear at all, just go ahead and change it, man. They're super cheap. It takes just a couple minutes and you're done. And remember what Cookie was saying. If you see wear on the outside of the closing loop, it's highly likely that inside the closing loop has many times more wear than what you're able to see. Because you think of all that friction with the pin, with the, um, the pull-up cord and all that stuff, or even if you're using a, a power tool or whatever it's called, you're still wearing that thing out. Um, it doesn't cost much, doesn't take much time, and it could save you from a really bad malfunction. Um, so take care of that. If you, uh, if you haven't ever made your own closing loop, now you know how. Get yourself a fit, get you some of that, uh, what's it called? Type 2A. Type 2A. <laughs> Start making your own. Awesome. Thank you, Cookie. Yeah, no problem. I hope you guys learned something, and uh, we'll see you out in the sky. Crave, do more, be better.